Thank you. Uh, this brings us to the last uh, presentation, that is the keynote address by respected uh, Maulana Mubarak Ahmad Nazir Sahib, the missionary in charge, Canada Jamaat. He would be speaking on the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of God be upon him, prophet for all times. Maulana Mubarak Nazir. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh amma ba'du fa'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim in our salna kabil hake bashira wa nazira wa imin umatin illa khala fiha nazir kul ya yuhanna so inni rasulullah alaykum jamia ladies and gentlemen and our honorable guests We have been overwhelmed by the praises and nice things that you have said about our community. But let me make one correction. The person who really deserves these praises is the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are his humble disciples. He is the motivating force. So as you shower those praises on the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, we are part and parcel of the 1.5 billion Muslims of the world. One out of every four people in the world is a Muslim. But the real praise goes to the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who is who was born in Makkah and lies triumphantly buried in Medina. An orphan. Imagine his plight. The father died before he was born, before he was born. Hardly six years and the mother also died. Look, we, I am talking of 1,400 years. In fact, 1,443 years, according to the Gregorian calendar. Those days, a child who was an orphan would be lost. He not only lost his father, before he was born, he lost his mother when he was hardly six years old. This child was tossed into the lap of the grandfather, Abu Mutalib. You have heard this many, many times. Our guests may not have heard. But then Hazrat Mutalib also died. Eight years maybe he was handed over to the uncle. Imagine this child who was tossed from lap to lap. Look at the grandeur of that, that, that person, that orphan. Once uh, somebody came to him to, to meet, to greet him. And when he saw the grandeur of uh, the Holy Prophet, may peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, he saw the spiritual glow on his face. He started trembling. And my master said, why do you tremble? I am a humble person. My mother used to, even did not have fire in the, in the, in the house. 
he used to heat you know some beef in the sun that is how he used to eat when god wants to elevate the rank of somebody that orphan not only he was an orphan a complete orphan and a completely unlettered person ummi could not read and write and look at the miracle that in hardly 23 years the entire holy quran was revealed upon him the holy quran which is such a book that god the almighty said in the lahul hafizun where i will protect it it's not an inspired work it's a verbatim word by word every syllable revealed by god no interpolation more than 1400 years have passed and not a single dot not a single vowel you cannot change it it is like a jigsaw you take out one and the whole picture is demolished this is the grandeur of the holy quran was revealed to an ummi who could not read and write that 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 was the prophet of allah when he used to pass through the streets and he used to go for prayers i mean he was a model for the orphans he was not only a model for the orphans he was also a model for those who were unlettered he was a or he was a model for the rulers for the for the people who were ruled for the people who were persecuted he was a model for the young for the old for the married for the single for the kings for the rulers you know why because his message was for the entire world and that message is perpetual is everlasting it does not finish it is as fresh as it was in those days it is as applicable as it is today you see war and conflicts going all over in the world there are countless instances the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say life is like an open book you pick up any page look at the wars that are being fought nowadays when the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had to fight that war of self defense when he had just 313 people and the makkans were over a thousand well armed and the muslims you know hardly had got maybe one horse swords of timber wood wooden swords and when the battle was about to be fought the muslims occupied the muslims occupied a part where there was a water pond pani ka zakhira tha and the 
Meccans who had come to destroy the Holy Prophet, to destroy Islam. They wanted to come and take some water. The Muslims refused. The Holy Prophet وسلم, came to know of this. He said, don't stop people from taking water. Look at what's happening in the world today. You attack a country and you destroy their infrastructure. You destroy their institutions. You pollute their water system. You destroy their electrical system. You destroy their communication system. You destroy their educational system. People say Islam was spread with the help of the sword. It is the magnanimity of the Holy Prophet. It, it was the clemency of the Holy Prophet. That has captured us. You think there is a sword hanging on over my head? I have been a missionary for the last 50 years. Which sword? It was the sword of compassion. It was the sword of forgiveness. It's the sword of kindness. How you treat your enemies. You know, we all can be very kind to our relatives. People we know, our clan, we can be very kind to them. But to be compassionate to the adversary whose object is to, is to decimate you. That was the mission of the Holy Prophet. Started with compassion. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful, the benevolent. That is the message of Islam. Read the Holy Quran from the beginning to the end. It's the message of compassion. The Holy Quran says we divided you into tribes and sub-tribes so that you may recognize one another. Not so that you may, you may enslave other people. Not because of that. Not because of the pigment of the skin, you would enslave. The Holy Quran says, I divided you so that you would get the good things of every nation. From the black, from the white, from the Indian, from the Persian. Nobody has got a monopoly of wisdom. Look at my accent. Look at the clothes I'm wearing. Look at the pigment of my skin. That is what the Holy Quran taught. Not to strangulate other people, not to sit on their fossil reserves. That is not the object of Islam. Islam is a religion of compassion. The Holy Prophet used to pass and go for prayers and there was a woman who used to toss filth on, upon him. Many times he would have to go back and take another, he'd wash his clothes, wash his head. She used to throw, that was how she thought that she was doing a noble job. Whenever he would pass, throw some filth. For some days, no filth was thrown upon him. The Holy Prophet said, where is that old lady? Who used to throw filth up? Where is she? They said she's very seriously sick. My master went to greet her. This is how we are enslaved. This is how we are captured. This is how we are in shackles. It was the love of the Holy Prophet. That's what he taught us. You praise us for saying love of your country is part of your faith. It's my master who taught us. 
is not for any political gains or just to gain your favor. It is our obligation. This is the, our requirement. Especially we, you know, who have come from different parts of the, of, 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 of the world. As many people were mentioning about the persecution of our community. Our, our minarets are being brought down, the domes are being brought down, the mosques are being desecrated, the Kalima Tayyiba is being erased from our mosques. Even our graveyards are not safe. Look at the beauty of this country, you have the mayor. You have the mayor who come and say build a mosque. No wonder, no wonder Hazrat Khalifatul Masih, the fourth said, prayed for this country. I have said this many times and I love saying it on and on and on. That prayer, and let me tell you that that prayer is working on this land. He said, oh my God, let the whole world become like Canada. Or if not, let Canada become the whole world. We are not politicians that we come and say things that will please you. It is the Holy Prophet who taught us this. Love your country, love your neighbor. That is the golden rule. And that is the golden rule in Judaism also. That is what Christ also taught. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Look, there are thousands and thousands of prophets. The Holy Prophet said there are 124,000 prophets who came into this world. And God the Almighty said that I have sent a prophet unto all nations. Muslims may differ. We may differ in many things. Sometimes we differ on where to fold our hands. Some people put their petty differences are there. Differences are there. But we do not differ on this that we believe in all prophets. Let a Jewish scholar, let a Jewish scholar sitting over here, or let a Hindu priest sitting over here, or let a Christian sitting over here, the Holy Quran and the Holy Prophet وسلم, spoke about the protection of the synagogues, the protection of the mosques. In fact, he spoke about the protection of the mosque as the last one. Protect the churches. Maybe I can see my son sitting over here somewhere and I can assure you that if my son is killed, while protecting a synagogue or while protecting a church in the sight of Allah, he will be a martyr. This is the grand religion of Islam. Why not study? Look, we all have a short life. Last year we were here in this hall, and many names are going to be announced, maybe tomorrow, of those people who are no, no more, gone. Tomorrow you and I will go. This is the statistics. This is the probability, which is 100%. You and I have to go. What preparations? God sent his prophet. Now we come and sit down and say, Michael Hart 
said this about the holy prophet Mahatma Gandhi said Bertrand Russell said this the Encyclopedia Britannica I read, wrote about this Thomas Carlyle wrote about this I've got references over here what he said they pale into insignificance when the creator I mean you can always you cannot judge a person completely you might see a person's uh, robes and you might see he's gone and you might make a wrong judgment but Allah Ta God the Almighty who has created you who has created me who has created all of us who has created the over 8 billion people inhabiting this planet he says God says even I, the angels and I, even I praise him. So all these Michael Hart and all these things, yes, thank you very much, but they pale into insignificance. They become irrelevant. When we know what the Holy Prophet said. Look at all the persecution. We are a persecuted community. Oh, people, in every, every Friday we have the, a funeral prayer of that man, you know, killed and that man martyred and that man martyred. We know how to bear. We have Khilafat, khilafat in us. We know how to endure. We have got very good shock observer, observers. Because the Khalifa of the, of, 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 of the Khalifa, he guides us. That is, that, that is the Prophet of Islam. That is the Holy Prophet. Look at the persecution that he was given. All those persecutions, how he was persecuted, we are also being persecuted like that. He was deprived from going for, to Mecca for Hajj. We are deprived. I went for Umrah once. I want to go for Hajj, but disclosing my identity as a missionary in charge would put me into peril. And our community wouldn't allow that. The persecution which he met. Sometimes he was praying and the intestine of a camel was, 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 was dirty intestine of a camel was thrown on his, on his neck. He could not even rise up. Sometimes he was walking and they would slap him and ridicule him. He calls himself a prophet of God. Members of our community are well aware of these incidents. I don't want to make you sad. But mentioning them, he went to Taif. He thought that they might listen to him. And they set vagabonds and dogs. Street people, they chased him out. He was bleeding from head to toe. And could not even run because of the slippery blood that was in his shoes. That was my master. When the angel appeared and said, Oh, prophet of God, with your command, we will destroy the city. And the holy prophet said, No. It is quite possible that people from this community will, will embrace Islam and they will, uh, they will accept the unity and oneness of God. So he was an excellent exemplar because he was to be a prophet, the final law-wearing prophet. The final law-wearing prophet. No new law would come. The Holy Quran is the final law.
and these the, the, the are the teachings. And because he was to be a universal prophet, did any prophet claim that he was a universal prophet? I have read the Bible, I have read the Old Testament. Sometimes it surprises me that the Holy Quran speaks about the Old Testament with great respect. And the Holy Quran says, It has got guidance, it has got light. The Holy Quran says this. About the New Testament, again the Holy Quran says, in the same surah, Surah Maida. It contains light, it contains guidance. It contains light, it contains guidance. This is the Holy Quran that you see some people, you know, maybe in America or somewhere, he wanted to make a bonfire of the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran which has got a special chapter, Surah Maryam, which speaks about the greatness of Hazrat Maryam. An entire chapter has been devoted to her name. A chapter which speaks about all prophets. Speaks about the greatness of Maryam, the Mary, the Virgin Mary. That how she conceived miraculously. The name of Jesus Christ is mentioned in the, in the, in the, in the Holy Quran more than 24 times. The Holy Prophet is mentioned in many names, but precisely Muhammad only mentioned three, four times. If it was a book written by him, God forbid, first of all he was illiterate. This is the book that they want to burn. This is the messenger of peace. Look, after all these atrocities, many speakers before me, both those speakers have spoken on that subject, that how after those years of persecution, when members of his community used to be dragged on the hot cobbles of Arabia, when the lady Sumera, his, her legs were tied to two camels and the camels were driven in opposite direction and she was torn like a piece of paper. His own uncle, his body was mutilated. Hinda, the lady, had mutilated his body and then took out the liver and she said, I'll chew it. My master forgave her. So it is the clemency. This is our jihad. This is our jihad. We are a small community. You know the historians, the Western historians have written great books on the Holy Prophet and one French historian has written one book. In that book he says that I was in Medina and I saw the Muslims, I mean, he was just dramatizing it. Not that he was actually there, he was dramatizing it. He said, I was looking at these people, there was a bunch of people in Medina's mosque. The mosque was, uh, you know, the floor was made of mud and the rain water would come down because the palm leaves were covering the, were used as the roof of that mosque, the mosque of the Holy Prophet. And the water would come and there, those people who were praying, so dilapidated people, but they, they were in rags. If somebody had a shirt, he didn't have a trouser. Somebody had a shoe, one shoe, the other was not there. 
If he had a wrapper around, he didn't have a shirt. He said, I listened to those people and I went near and I said, what are they discussing, by the way? These paupers, these poor people, what are they discussing? He said, I heard that they were discussing how they would conquer the world. People had a big laugh. These people? Their clothes are tattered. Their foreheads are there with mud. And you see from their stomachs that they have not eaten. And they are talking about conquering the world. And then this French writer writes, do you know that they did it? Do you know that they did it? We as the members of the Ahmadiyya community, we are a small group. And we are also in Tatars. Considering our number, numeric number, look at how few we are. Look at our resources. And we sit down over here. Just like those people sat down in the mosque of Medina. We sit down here and make plans of how to conquer the world through the message of love, through the message of, comp not with sabers and swords, not by storming beachheads, by love, affection, by arguments, by science, by service. These are our weapons. We sit down over here, people might say, they are a bunch of crazy people. They are not in their senses. But let me tell you, if those people succeeded, these people will also succeed. We might be few in number. You know, I, I like uh, when uh, Mahatma Gandhi said something. I like it. He said, whenever such a religious movement starts, there are three phases. First, they ignore you. Like we are ignored, you know. Uh, just people, you know, sitting over here, Asians who have come together. Look at their funny clothes. He said, first people ignore you. And then they ridicule you. Pehle nazar andaz kar dete hain, phir unko unko madha kya, tum, tum karo ge. Tumhye halat ho dekho. Shisha dekha kabhi. They first ignore you, then they ridicule you, then they fight with you. And then you win. May Allah Ta'ala bless you all. Inshallah Ta'ala, we will win. And our weapon is the weapon of prayer, is the weapon of love. And against this weapon of love, the world has got no weapon whatsoever. We are brandishing this weapon of love, this weapon of affection, this weapon of magnanimity, this weapon of benevolence. And for which, inshallah ta'ala, the world has got no answer. Jazakallah, uh, Sayyidina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we come to the close of the meeting. There will be some announcements before the close.